Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a shallow depth of field effect using the new features in Adobe Photoshop 2022. So if you use the Adobe apps and you haven't updated to the latest versions yet, I recommend you go and do that. Quite a few of them have been updated to the 2022 versions and there are some really cool features in those new apps. You may have seen some videos around YouTube showing some of the new features and I am picking out one of those from Adobe Photoshop 2022 today, but what I want to do is show how that feature can be used specifically for the work we do as photographers. So I picked out a street photography shot and I'm going to be showing you how to use the Select on Hover tool, which is an enhancement to the object selection tool really. And I'm going to show you how to use that and then create a shallow depth of field effect. And a little caveat, I know that some people don't like this type of manipulation and post-processing. Some people think it goes too far or it's not true to photography. Personally, I think it's just another tool in the same way that a camera is a tool or a lens. And you know, you wouldn't think twice about swapping to a lens with a wider aperture so that you can get a shallower depth of field. So, you know, why does it matter if you use a tool such as a computer or software to create a similar effect? But I'm interested to know what you think. So leave some comments below. Let us know if you think this is going too far, why you think it is, or if you think it's okay to use these kind of tools. And hopefully we'll get a bit of good discussion going. But before that, let's get into the process and see how it's done. Okay, so this is the image we're going to work on. This is a street photography shot that I took when I was making a vlog not too long ago. I'll link up top to that one if you haven't seen it. And I do quite like this image. I just saw this guy as he was working, walking past. I quite liked the reflection in the window behind there. And I like how the background is quite dull grey, but the subject, the man, really pops out because he's wearing this really bright, vibrant, high-vis suit in the yellows and oranges there. And there's some nice separation because of that colour. But I do think it could benefit from a bit more separation. And one way of doing that is to have a shallower depth of field. So I was using a 50mm 1.8 Z lens for this and it was at around about f2.5. But even so, it's not quite as shallow as I would like. So I'm going to show you a technique how you can blur the background in such a way that it gives the illusion of shallower depth of field. But before we do that, let's have a look at another way we can do this. So if we go to filter, Go to Neural Filters, that'll bring up this little side menu. And these are all Neural Filters which are quite new to Photoshop. And down here, under Beta, we've got Depth Blur. So, bear in mind this is in Beta, so it's not the full version that Photoshop wants to release as the final product. But if we turn that on, we'll see we've got some processing going on down here. And if we give that a little time, it does start to blur the background. And that's with some automatic selection, so Photoshop will determine where the subject is, where the background is, and automatically apply that. We can untick this and choose a focus point ourselves. So if I click on the man's head up here, and we click OK. On first inspection, that's done quite a good job. We've got the blurred out background, our subjects are still in focus. but if we zoom in and inspect closer, we'll see we've got this weird halo effect around his head and his nose has been flattened off for some reason and it's just not great. So I'm going to show you a way to use Photoshop's older technology to get better results. So the first thing we're going to do is select our subject. So we do this in much the same way as in any other version of Photoshop or recent versions of Photoshop. Uh, the fourth tool down on the left here, if we hold our button down on that we get a pop-out menu and we've got object selection tool, so that's been around for a little while now. But what is different is that when you hover over certain subjects, they'll become highlighted, so these are the areas that will be selected if we click. This is turned on by default, but you can turn it off by unticking this little box here where it says object finder. So I'm going to hover over my guy. Just click him like that and you'll see he gets the marching ants around him. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bin and the rest of his bin trolley 
thing, <laughs> whatever that is. And you see we've got our selection there, really quick. Now it's not 100% perfect all the time. You'll find that in certain areas, certain little tight nooks and crannies, you've got areas like this where it doesn't quite fit properly to the space that we want to cut out. So I'm just going to tidy that up by clicking on the lasso tool here and I'll press option or I think it's alt on a PC and that'll give a little minus symbol just next to the lasso you see it going on and off there and I'm just going to draw into that area there and then let go and then that'll subtract from my selection area and I'll just do that there I'm going to add that bit there because it's missed that bit of his jumper and then I'm going to subtract this little bit so like I said, it's Alt or Option on your keyboard to minus and you press Shift on your keyboard to add. Okay, I think that's not looking too bad now. Okay, what we want to do now is create a new channel from our selection. So we'll go down to Channels, which is just to the right of Layers here. And we'll click the little icon down here to create a new layer or new channel in this case and that'll be called alpha one now if we select the paint bucket tool which is here with white selected as our primary color we're just going to click once in there and that'll make our selection area go white so i'll just deselect that by pressing command and d or control and d on my keyboard and then I'll use Command and I, or you can press Control and I if you're on a PC, just to invert that. So we want our selection area in black and everything else in white. I'll click on RGB up here, just to see our colour channels again. And then I'll go back to Layers. And now I'm going to go up to Filter. So we go down to Blur, then Lens Blur. And that'll bring up this preview window and we've got some parameters on the side that we can change. By default, depth map will be set to none, but we want to change our source to alpha one. That's the channel we just created. And basically what's happening here is that it'll be looking at the channel that we just created and all the areas that are white, it's gonna apply the effect to that area and all the areas that were black, it's gonna say, no, leave that area, don't apply the filter. Now you can play around with these settings if you want. I'm going to leave them mostly as they are. You can change the bokeh, for example, by changing it to hexagon or heptagon. I'm just going to leave it on octagon. I think that's quite a nice pleasing bokeh. And then you can play around with your radius and blade curvature and things like that until you get your background looking exactly how you want it. All I would say is don't whack things up too high. Don't put the parameters up to silly levels because it just won't look right. You want to go quite subtle for this. And when you're done, just click OK, and that's applied the effect. Now what you're gonna notice is that the bottom of our image, where the ground is here, doesn't look quite right because it's applied the blur effect down here. But if this was a real photo with real depth of field going on, it wouldn't be blurred down there. So the way we're going to get around that, I'm just going to undo that effect and I'm going to duplicate this layer down here. So Command and J on my keyboard or you can use Control and J if you're using a PC. And you see we've got two layers now and they're identical. So with the top layer selected, I'm going to go back to Filter and apply the Lens Blur again. And what you can do is just click there at the top and that'll just apply the effect with the same parameters that we selected before. And now I'm going to add a layer mask to that layer. So I'll go to layer up here, layer mask, reveal all. I'll click and hold on the paint bucket tool here and then use the gradient tool. I'm going to select my primary color as black. And then what I'm going to do is just 
drag up a gradient like that and you'll see what that's done is put a black gradient just at the bottom of our image here and that's masked out the effect or it's masked out that whole layer there so that we can see the layer beneath which doesn't have the effect applied so that gives the illusion that the foreground is not blurred and then we gradually get more and more blurry as we recede into the background of the image. So there you go, that's how you can create a shallow depth of field effect using the lens blur and select on hover tools in the new version of Adobe Photoshop 2022. If you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up down below. And like I said, it's not for everyone this, but why not leave some comments? Let us know what you think about this. Would you use it? Does it look plausible? Do you think it's right or wrong to use it? It's great to get some discussion going. There are some other really cool features in the new version of Photoshop, as well as some new features in the new version of Lightroom as well. And hopefully I'll get around to covering some of those in upcoming videos. So I hope you'll catch me for that one. If you are new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. As I always say, you can click down here on the big red button or over here on my face. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So that's it for this one. But please do catch me for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.